Good morning, world. Okay, so I did a little experiment the other day. I wanted to share it with you. So I went on to Facebook, something that I, I tried to avoid and I've been staying away from for a little over the last 22 months. But I went on to Facebook and found a group called Women Empowering Women. And I joined this group. And I said, hey, I'm looking to find out what you guys do for your business. And within minutes, minutes, mind you, um, I had received over 400 friend requests. Uh, I received more uh, messages from people, hey, hunting me. And I had them not only friending me, but friending my friends. This is not acceptable behavior. Um, I didn't accept a single one of those friend requests. Um, I didn't accept one of them. All of the messages I received, I reported as spam, unwanted messaging from, you know, to Facebook. But it blew my mind, literally blew my mind, how many women were in MLMs trying to empower other women and they were just trying to tout some of their MLM companies. I mean, I had Avon, Sensi, a credit repair place, um, some stupid chalkboard sign thing, some bejeweled art jewelry thing. Um, I'm amazed I didn't get a cut co knives or anything like that. But it it just it wow. That's all I can say. Wow. Okay. And then yes, I love Avon products. I love their skin so soft line. Um, I like the lotion. But I get a catalog from my Avon lady in my mailbox like every two weeks. And I was flipping through it. And one of my favorite hairlines, BioSilk, was in there. And a 12-ounce bottle of BioSilk Silk Therapy for Hair was $28. You can get the same thing at Ulta or Amazon for $16.99. So why would you pay almost double? Oh, and the bottle I got from Amazon uh, for $16.99 was a 24-ounce bottle. So why would you pay double for something that you can get more of at half the price? I don't know. Because that's how MLMs work. So anyway, I wanted to go over um, another blog post from another elite uh, talking about uh, the fall colors the Pantone palette. Okay, so the fall colors, you know, um, the colors this year, they're basically another play on blue. They just named it something else, but it's a metallic blue. Okay, then they have a uh, kind of a burnt orange color um, or milk chocolate color. It's brown. It's not Adobe. It's brown. Okay, then we have this ugly green that they call olive branch because we got to extend that olive branch, whatever. Then we have the new red, which looks like a, a red brick color or something that's like clay pottery. They call it fire whirl. And then we have the pale pink, which they call rose something or other. Then we have yellow, uh, which they call illuminating. <laughs> okay. Then we have the dark brown, which this year they call it root beer instead of deep chocolate. But it's still brown. Then we have the dusty blue, which they call Spring Lake. And then we have the, uh, you know, Kelly Green, which they call Leprechaun. And then we have the Paparazzi Pink, which is Fuchsia something or other. Um, it's basically the same colors, just knocked up or down a little bit of a shade. But it's not a fall color to me. These aren't fall. So, uh, you know, it's just gross. And then... Um, I talked about the paparazzi lingo the other day and how, you know, the paparazzi lingo is is big. Well, um, you know, I know that uh, the anti-MLM movement is gain gaining a lot of traction because uplines are talking about how not to go onto our channels and watch our content. They're steering people away from our videos, our blogs. Um, because they don't want people to see outside of the boxes, okay? So, 
it's amazing how much paparazzi can age a person. They can age you through stress, which shows up in your hair turning grayer. They can age you with weight because you gain weight when you're in financial distress and you're not sleeping and you're stressed, you get the stress belly. All of us have experienced these things. Um, but it's amazing how much they don't want us to, you know, talk out. But I saw this post uh, from a couple people in my old team. You know, that Black Friday box is coming around again, you guys. But what are they doing? They're telling husbands to sign their wives up for the MLM. Um, stumped on what to buy that special lady? And I swear they all got this from somebody because it's the same exact post on three people's pages. How about an amazing paparazzi accessories starter kit it's loaded with 35 pieces oh and let me forget beautiful pieces of jewelry and tons of selling tools no they're recruiting tools they're not selling tools they're recruiting tools what better gift could you give uh, than one to help her start her own business again 4.1 of the policies and procedures manual it's not a business opportunity it says it right in the policy and procedures manual. Uh, <laughs> if she doesn't want to start her own business, oh well. She'll still be over the moon with 35 pieces of jewelry that she'll have. And then we'll take over from there, upline huns, by pressuring her to buy jewelry, to sell jewelry, to do all this other stuff. Sign up your wife so we can continue to indoctrinate her and take your money. How is that a great Christmas gift? You're giving someone 35 pieces of beautiful, cheap Chinese jewelry, and you're encouraging her to start selling it and buying at a discount and being a customer, not a consultant. When you are a consultant, you are a customer. I am going to keep saying this because that is what you are. You are a customer of paparazzi, not a consultant, okay? So when they keep saying this, you are a customer, okay? And I'm going to pull up the policies and procedures one more time and read section 4.1 to you again because um, I think it needs to be said. When a consultant joins paparazzi, they are an independent consultant or independent contractor. You're not a consultant. You're not a contractor. You are a customer, and they should really change the verbiage of this. They do not purchase a franchise or business opportunity and the agreement between the independent consultant and paparazzi does not create an employee, employer, relationship, partnership, or venture. As a result, the independent customer is solely responsible for paying all state, local, and federal taxes owed from any compensation earned in the form of retail profits retained at the sale of the product or the bonus commission uh, paid by the compensation plan. Paparazzi will not withhold any FICA taxes from any commissions or bonuses paid out. You will establish your own goals, hours, parties, shows, and methods of sale. Okay. So this, this uh, post, it says, what better gift could, gift could you give her than her own business to help her to, continue to, can, to help her to continue to give the gift of affordable and beautiful jewelry? If she doesn't want to start her own business, oh well. All right, paparazzi consultants, have you read your policies and procedure manual? You're not selling a business opportunity. It says so in the policy and procedures manual. So you're contradicting yourself, paparazzi, you're contradicting yourself. You're not selling a business opportunity. What you're selling is the right to be a, cu a customer at a discounted price. Okay. Now, with that being said, what are the responsibilities of consultants? To avoid any disruption in business practices, the consultant is responsible to notify paparazzi of any changes to the contact information provided on the consult consultant account. So you have when you change your address, your telephone number, or any of your contact information, you have to let them know. Okay, uh, paparazzi will not uh, deliver to a post office box, so you have to have a deliverable shipping address. All right, so. 
in the state of Washington, there are some very rural areas or areas where the post office can't deliver. So you have to have a post office box to pick up your jewelry. But since they only deliver with FedEx, if FedEx doesn't deliver to this place, you're SOL. So you better find that out before you sign up. All right, changes to the agreement, section 6.2. It is the consultant's responsibility to update or initiate any updates if there are any changes to the agreement, including government ID numbers, applicant names, or business entities. These changes can be initiated through paparazzi support and require that newly executed and completed agreement be submitted. There may be an additional $25 fee to change principals, business entities, or taxable government IDs on file. So. In a previous video, it was in section four, if you wanted to sell your business to somebody, paparazzi has to approve of the business and then they have to pay a $250 fee. If you get an updated government ID, say you get married and change your name, you have to pay $25 for them to update that information too. So collect money, collect money, collect money. All right, section 6.3, continuing leadership. Any consultant who sponsors another consultant into paparazzi must perform a bona fide assistance and training function to ensure that his or her organization structure is properly operating in the paparazzi business and that they are in full compliance with local, state, and federal laws and this agreement. Okay, so um, I'm just going to say this. I don't know how many elites have actually read the policies and procedures manual, manual in full. Uh, before they signed up, but I can tell you this much. Uh, they love to be the policy police But you know, they're very do as I say not as I do Okay It is expected that consultants will monitor the activities of their organizations and support full compliance with the company's policies contained within this agreement in any circumstance where it is discovered by a consultant that a member of their team may be in violation to this agreement, they must do all within their power to bring them back into compliance with this agreement. If, if that is not possible or completed, they are to notify paparazzi compliance department immediately. So it says right in the agreement, you need to pull them back and make them compliant, and if not, you have to report them. All right, whatever. Providing documentation. When enrolling a new consultant, the sponsoring consultant must be able to provide or ensure that they have access to and have reviewed our latest version of policies and procedures and the compensation plan and the consultant agreement before the new consultant signs the independent consultant agreement or completes the process online. Well, in order to complete the process online, you have to say that you agree to the terms and conditions conditions of the consultant agreement and um, that's how I re-downloaded uh, the newest and latest version of the consultant paparazzi agreement is uh, because I went through the process of pretending to enroll again so I could get the most updated version okay all right so 6.5 reporting obligation all consultants have an obligation to report any policy violation that they may witness or be aware of to the paparazzi compliant department failure to do so may result in compliance actions taken against them all right so when consultants report uh, Trent Kirby for violating the terms and conditions of the policy and procedure manual um, they're doing what they're supposed to. They, they are fulfilling their obligation of reporting his uh, egregious behavior to the company. But in turn, they're the ones that get canceled and Trent can still put his, his BSE videos out there. And when they provide screenshots or documentation or video evidence of it, again, nothing happens. What about when people are reporting um, the uh, founders of the company to uh, federal authorities for violating CDC mandates in Las Vegas. They're the ones getting canceled, not the founders of the company. Well, you can't, you can't like fault the people for not providing refundable tickets to an event that was during the height of Delta variant. You can't fault them for uh, not allowing people to transfer their tickets to those who are vaccinated. You can't fault them for not enforcing a mask mandate when they themselves 
weren't even wearing or holding a mask in half the Instagram pictures that I've seen online. So do as I say, not as I do. It's very, very consistent with um, hypocrites. They're hypocrites. All right. So section 6.6, .6, laws and ordinances. All consultants must be aware and adhere to any local federal laws and ordinances that may affect or be a part of paparazzi business or sales activity. Again, CDC guidelines were not followed in Las Vegas. So they were in violation of laws and ordinances. Uh, the state of Nevada and the city of Las Vegas had a mask mandate in effect while they were holding their super spreader celebration COVID event. So they're in direct violation of their own policies and procedures right there. Okay, section 6.7, federal regu regulations. The certain federal regulations to govern and direct the sale of inventory, which includes paparazzi accessories. In order to comply with those regulations, consultants must ensure the following information provided on sales receipts of each transaction. Date of transaction, product issued, name of and selling address of the consultant, and signature of purchaser indicating receipt of product. That's why I had a Shopify store. Because it did all of that for me and I didn't have to worry about a damn thing. But what about those people that don't? Uh, they have to invoice through, say, um, PayPal. Well, pal, pay, PayPal takes a, a cut of it. If they were invoicing through Venmo or just doing a cash app application before Venmo uh, got privy that people were using it for business and started taking a cut, it was just transferring money back and forth through Venmo. So, you know, don't get me started on that. They also must be aware of the consultant's return policy of the product. I never had a return policy. All sales are final. If you're a if you're product, I inspected each piece before I mailed it out. Uh, after it left my hands, I had no control over how the post office handled that product or if it re if it got to them intact. However, I would offer a, you know a replacement piece if something became came through damaged. But if you were unable to fix it with that you know special E6000 glue that they tell us to tell everyone to get, um, it was on them. That's all I'm saying. Adherence to Hostess Rewards Program. Okay, so on my website, on my Shopify website, I I adhered to the Hostess Rewards Program. Uh, you're supposed to give a hostess a 10% credit for the retail sales generated at their hostess party, and then they would earn free stuff. So I, I kind of did the same thing with my website. They also had these little punch cards by... 13 get one free and I had the same punch card kind of thing set up with my Shopify website but according to my upline she had to rein me in and tell me to take that down because it was a violation of compliance no it wasn't it was a virtual punch card it was a virtual punch card it was not against compliance according to you know their stupid policy and procedure manual uh, reception of the product. When an order is received, this is section 6.9, when an order is rece received, it is the consultant's responsibility to do an immediate inventory of the product delivered to determine they are not damaged or missing pieces from that invoiced order. Failure to notify paparazzi within three business days of the confirmed delivery, the shipment will cancel your right to request a return. Any pieces that may be received can be reasonably corrected using the complete jewelry toolkit included in each starter kit. <laughs> AKA this thing, which I put paparazzi stuff on top of it. And here's all the damaged broken jewelry that I have. And I kept it for replacement pieces and honestly, I don't know why I still have this. But that's the toolkit that you can reasonably fix or replace the damaged items. Alright, whatever. Alright, uh, lost or stolen orders. In the event that an order is shipped by paparazzi and not received by the designated recipient, paparazzi will initiate a claim through the associated courier, aka FedEx. The courier's investigation process can take up to 10 business days. If the courier determines that the package was delivered to the address provided and no signature was obtained, well, they never send their stuff with sign signature requested. A replacement order may be sent at paparazzi's discretion. 
There's no guarantee of replacement of the order being sent under these circumstances. If excessive or fraudulent claims of missing deliveries are submitted by a consultant, corrective action, including suspension and possible termination, will be initiated. So everyone knows that um, during this time of year especially, thieves are out stealing packages off of front porches. It's just a known thing. It happens. Okay. So if your package gets stolen a lot, I don't know why anyone would steal paparazzi jewelry, but if your if your mail gets stolen a lot, yeah, you could be terminated because you're you're being ripped off by thieves. So in this case, what do you have to do? File not only get a police report, but then you have to prove to paparazzi, hey, I'm trying not to get my stuff stolen. All right, whatever. Okay, so section 6.11, holding or manipulation of enrollments or orders. A consultant must never hold or manipulate the timing of an independent consultant's enrollment or order. Doing so will result in conclusion that the actions are in conjunction with bonus buying, see section 5.19, and will be subject to compliance review. Doing so also postpones the activity of the new independent consultant and can damper an opportunity for them to succeed. No, they just don't want you to hold things so you can uh, move up on your commission tree, and they don't want to prevent someone else from coming in and buying the product. All right, this is the last section of, uh, or second to last section, 6.12, action of household members. If a member of a consultant's immediate household engages in activities that violate this agreement, including these policies, the consultant will be considered to be in violation of the agreement. This section also applies to any member of a business entity that is a business representative of paparazzi as a consultant. There are so many things that I could go off on with this one. Furby is one of those things. He, he is a, a member of a household of a paparazzi consultant, and he's violating these terms and conditions and the policies and procedures with every stupid TikTok video the man does. <laughs> but yet he's still an active consultant, according to the website. So, okay then. So 6.12, they really don't, they really don't enforce that one. Again, it's hypocritical. It's do as I say, not as I do. And this is this is a thing they do. And here's the last section, business insurance. <laughs> Paparazzi does not provide for any form of any business or liability insurance for a consultant's business. Consultants are free to purchase such insurance for their business. Homeowners or automobile coverage usually does not provide coverage for any type of business-related injury, theft, or damage. <sighs> okay, you um, you know, I if I could, I would. Uh, if I still had twenty five thousand pieces of jewelry in my house, you know, I would take it out to my backyard and I would light it on fire. That's how much I hate this company because you know you're supposed to dispose of your product if you are no longer an active consultant. You either sell it at the five dollar price point or you dispose of it. No. They want you to throw it away. And, you know, again, somebody in the recovering paparazzi group uh, did return, you know, her jewelry to paparazzi that she had in her house for the $2 uh, refund that they deem at their discretion. And they can so choose which pieces they uh, give you your money back on. So 12 of the pieces they decided they weren't giving her money back on. They may have been hostess rewards, I don't know. However, she paid to ship the items back to paparazzi. So if she was smart, she did a priority mail flat rate and she shoved those boxes stuffed full of jewelry. So it's sixteen ninety five per box and she sent them quite a few pieces. So sixteen ninety five, you know, she's she's already out minimum a quarter of each piece. So right there, right off the top, before they even determine if they're going to give her any money back, she's out a dollar per item because they only give you two dollars for each item you pay two seventy-five for. 
not fair right there. Then you have to pay the shipping and then you have to wait for them to deem if they're actually going to take some of that product back or not. So who, who comes out ahead in this? Paparazzi, of course. Not the consultant, not the former consultant. Paparazzi does. And you want to send the product back to them at a loss um, before you cancel your consultant agreement with them. Otherwise, there's no way you're going to get your money back. So, you know, it's just easier to try and sell it yourself. A lot of people are, uh, you know, doing what they can to get rid of the jewelry themselves. And honestly, I'm so grateful I had my Shopify website and I was able to discount everything and spread the word and get it out there. Hey, everything's at a discount. Go crazy. And people did. And uh, my sales got it all out of my house and the credit card debt I had, I got it all paid off. But... You know, I started the the journey back in March of 2020, and now that people are exiting in mass right now and they're losing lots and lots of consultants, um, it's going to be a, probably a little bit harder to offload all your jewelry because you know, one, new releases aren't selling out every day, and two, people are having a hard time selling the jewelry, and there's a lot of people out there that are getting it tested for candium and lead and nickel and the findings are showing that it's not lead and nickel free it's not can candium or cadium free um, paparazzi may have done like one test when they first started ten years ago but the quality has a sense gone down so I can't tell you how many times the earrings I've worn when I haven't changed the fish hooks out to my surgical steel posts uh, I take the earrings off and my earlobes are black, black and discolored, and they hurt because, you know, the earrings that I put in without the changing post discolored my ears. And then some of the Starlet Shimmer earrings um, have burned my ears. So... You know, we got to be careful with these claims that it's lead nickel free because sometimes we're finding it's not. And the consultant will be on the hook for selling something that they claim is lead nickel free and it's not and their customer gets hurt from it. That consultant is going to be on the hook, not paparazzi, especially according to the agreement that paparazzi has put out there. So you've got to be careful with what you say, what you what's going on out there in the world and you have to protect yourself so my hope is that by watching these videos you get a little bit more education about it I'm gonna keep reading the policies and procedures until I'm done but honestly they get so daunting and so frustrating I just can't do it all the time so yeah it's it's one of those things you have to kind of pace yourself with it Alright, so have a great day. New releases are about to drop. However, I found this really interesting the other day. Uh, they have a piece called The Natural State of Mind and Road Trip Rebel, A Clear Path. But my favorite one that dropped this week was called Tea Time Gossip. And you know this was... Um, it looks like soon to be miss in red, but they call it tea room gossip. Well, the name of the recovering paparazzi consultants in the YouTube that videos out there are Tea Time with Tracy. I think it's kind of a, a you know a compliment. They're naming something after Tracy even after she's gone with uh, paparazzi, and they're paying homage to the fact that we're making an impact by calling it tea room gossip. Kind of nice, actually. And then, you know, some of these other pieces, they just look so, oh, and the 90s nostalgia and copper. Yeah, chokers were big in the 90s, but they were the lace chokers. And I remember paparazzi had some lace chokers when uh, they first started. If they want to bring those back, I'm sure they would sell like hop cakes. But I remember people saying that the thread would come loose and they would like frazzle in like a day. But I'm looking at some of the stuff that's, I mean, those kiss up earrings are still there. The draw dropping jellies are honestly still there. <laughs> um, and then they have these bountiful bouquets. Um, 
they're little flowers, but honestly, you can get those from the wholesaler for 28 cents a piece. I looked. And then this homegrown garden. It looks like something from a video game, like a Mario Brothers video game. I mean, the flower just looks so cheapy stupid. So anyway, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to seeing what they drop today. Anyway, have a happy Thursday. Don't forget to like and subscribe.